Lord is always good. We apologize for the inconveniences caused. It has been taken call. Well. Aware that Madi West Nile Diocese is extreme to northwestern part of Uganda. We do border the DRC in the northwest, southern Sudan in the north, and south in the Nebi Diocese. We are very happy for the children of Peak Primary School for leading us through the worship and the readings. Here we are. Um, the Right Reverend Charles Collins Andaku from Madi West Nile Diocese. My beloved brothers and sisters and the listeners in the Lord's service and our viewers around the world, we greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is risen, he's risen indeed, hallelujah. I bring you greetings from the clergy, from my family and Christians of Madi West Nile Diocese in Jesus name. I thank the Almighty God for such a wonderful opportunity to have online lunch hour to nurture us in our faith and ministry. More so for the privilege given to me to share in today's lunch hour, I'm humbled. I salute and thank his grace, the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, the Most Reverend Dr. Stephen Samuel Kaziba Mugalu and the organizers of this online lunch hour for your tireless effort in ensuring believers are spiritually nurtured. Keep it up and may God bless you. Lastly, I thank all our listeners, our leaders for today. This lunch hour, verse 15 of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 reads, he died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they live for Christ who died and was raised for them. Verse 17, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old is God and the new has begun. So verse 20 reads, so we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you are a faithful God, even in our weakness and our afflictions. Teach us to be faithful witnesses in your kingdom business. Use me to bring your word and let your children learn to live a life of faithful witness up to the end for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Our main theme is witness for Christ, but I'm going to talk about living a life of faithful witness. This is a call made to us as believers by Paul. As God is faithful to us and shows us his faithfulness in the way that shapes our life, Christ's life has also been upright and honorable. So when we put our faith in Christ, our old sinful self dies away with Christ and we receive new spiritual life. Galatians 2.20 and Romans 6.4-5. We should live no longer for us. We owe Christ our life, endeavors to live righteous life since we have been declared righteous when we receive our Lord as our savior. Like Paul, we too are Christ's ambassadors. We are God's spokesmen, his representatives on earth. God did not reconcile us to himself only for our own sake, but also that others might be reconciled through our testimony. As Christ's ambassadors, as new believers, new in Christ, our job is to implore men and women and be reconciled to God. Or in other words, accept by faith the reconciliation 
that Christ has already worked for mankind through his death on the cross. When we do so, we have peace with God. Since we have been justified through faith, and secondly, when we stand firm to the end, we'll be saved. But the question is, is it possible to live a life of faithful witness? This is the question we should ponder on. Today, it's difficult to find faithful Christians who live a life of a faithful witness for Christ to God and to the truth and salvation, even in the families, in our workplace and in our communities and the world at large, it is difficult. What you can see visible is unfaithfulness in marriage, in workplace, in families, we still even in churches and mosques. This is evidenced amongst us with the increasing false prophets coming on board, prayer intercession going in wrong direction, nominal Christians on increase who play double standards, immorality among both Christians and clergy, like a cancer which cannot be healed. The list is endless, God forbid. But the good news is our God is faithful, even in our weakness. He gives us hope even beyond affliction as our theme for this year. For he has unfailing love. The scripture teaches us in Lamentation 3.23 that great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each day. In verse 24, I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will have hope in him. Paul in 2 Corinthians 5, 11 to 21, calls us to living a life of faithful witnesses. I want to bring a few of the key points that can teach us to be a true witness for Christ. A witness by definition, is one who bears testimony to something or someone. In legal terminology, a witness is one who ob observes certain activities and testifies official to what he or she has been and had. Remember, God's law prohibits false testimony. Therefore, as Christians new in Christ, we still endeavor to bear witness to Christ up to the end. God designs his people as witnesses to great truth and he's indeed God. Similarly, the eyewitness of Jesus officially proclaimed his life, death, resurrection and lordship. We should do the same as believers in Christ. Because of the testimony of those who lived with Jesus, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, Christians receive power to become bold witnesses of Jesus Christ, telling others who he is and what he has done in their lives. Faithfulness is remembering steadfast to one's commitment. So God expects us to have a witness to be faithfully like God like Christ who was very faithful in his witness, like the Israelites who witnessed, the prophets, John the Baptist, and the Holy Spirit above all gives us the power to witness for Christ. Our call therefore as believers in this text is to be faithful in the ministry, in the reconciliation or as God's ambassadors. You are God's ambassadors, an official of high rank appointed to represent his or her country in the capital city where God has placed you. One who represents God of good qualities, therefore as ambassadors of the goodwill of his witness, Paul is calling us to be faithfully in our ministry. Therefore, being faithful to the gospel 
is being faithful and guarding against what God has entrusted in our hands. Don't lose it. Let no one steal it from you. Stick to the truth of the word. Spread the gospel in season and out of season and bear the gospel fruit of love and good conscience, friends. That is the first key point Paul is appealing to us as faithful witnesses of Christ to guard what he has entrusted in our hand jealously. Secondly, we need to obey God's command. We need to walk before God in his counsel, obeying his laws, and that will guarantee our faithfulness in this ministry and stay up to the end. Thirdly, we need to stay focused. In 1 Timothy 6.20b, we are to turn away from godless chatter and the opposing ideas that are falsely called knowledge, which some have professed and in so doing have wandered from their faith. Grace be to you. Friends, let's stay focused to our calling and let's be faithful to the gospel, the truth of Jesus Christ alone. You must be personally faithful to the gospel of Jesus Christ, that you are to stay focused on this message. Are you being focused in your ministry, being Christ ambassadors and being a witness to Christ? Do not wander away from the Lord's, don't wander away from the doctrine and don't wander away from false teachers and materialism, but rather increase your faith Increase your affinity in the love of the scripture, in prayer, in fellowship, like this we're having, and the passion for evangelism and mission and discipleship among others to continue bearing witness for Christ. Friends, we need to pray and seek God's grace. Every Christian need to know that to be faithful witness, we need God's grace. It is paramount. Paul ends in 1 Timothy 6, 21 with a beautiful benediction that grace be with you. Paul is understanding that Christian life, to live it and to walk it is only by grace. No one comes to the Lord unless by grace. Much as we are to live a faithful life and witness for the Lord, we must not walk on our own strength mighty or wisdom, but by God's grace. What you need is his grace to be faithful. The grace forgives us our failures. The grace of God can pick us from where we are to be his ambassadors. When you get lost, this grace can find you and can give you hope. And this grace empowers you to speak for the Lord and not to compromise. We all need the power of God's grace in all that we do. God's grace is sufficient in serving him. Second Corinthians 19 verse nine. In our prayer life, as we witness for Christ, we need his grace. Even in our use of our gift that God has given us, different gifts, let us seek his grace. And in persevering our struggle in the ministry, until death, we need God's grace. My dear brothers and sisters, the Lord wants you to be a new creation, very faithfully to the end, and being his true ambassadors to witness a servant of the Lord, passionately being committed and living a righteous and faithful life to the gospel and being obedient to his laws, focused on the truth and always seeking God's grace for his kingdom until he comes again. When you do so, you will be faithful to him and God will also be faithful to you. His eyes will be on you. He will preserve you. He will guard you, protect you and bless you. May the Lord enable us by his grace to get the reward of witnessing for Christ 
up to the end. In Jesus' name, I say all these things in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.